I was thinking, uh, was it yesterday? Uh, someone asked about if, let's say, a person were to, was it yesterday or in the other class? If, uh, if someone were to, don't know, uh, is it going into entertainment business or is it uh, esports or something? Was it yesterday or one of these days? Then ask whether is it a right livelihood. Um, so I uh, just want to very quickly touch on it. Then if you all have qu any questions, you can ask also. Uh, if we go strictly by the, uh, by the sutras, then the Buddha listed out a very clearly harmful um, livelihood. Livelihood involving the sale of uh, uh, flesh, cube uh, trading, and then um, the sale of weapons, uh, poison, yeah, etc. So these are harmful uh, uh, livelihood, yeah. Um, but there's also a distinction between livelihood for lay versus uh, monastic. So for monastic, the right to livelihood is going on Armstrong. Yeah? We are not to partake in uh, businesses. <clears throat> uh, even down to, uh, we're not allowed to uh, engage in medicinal practices. Yeah, so it's very interesting. Uh, even if you know medicine, you are not to, uh, you know, uh, take up the profession of a doctor. Yeah. And the, the reasoning being that if a monk were to do that, then the, then the, the, the role yeah, the role becomes um, uh, imbalanced. Yeah? Then the lay people will look at this, this uh, monk or nun, for that matter, more as a doctor than a monk. Then will just come for medicine, uh, come for medical treatment, and forget to ask for uh, spiritual advice, <laughs> ask for Dharma. Uh, and that's why sometimes when students ask me, um, <clears throat> like when they hear that, oh, Sifu last time was in the tech industry, then they automatically assume that I know how to fix computer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have helped some students fix their computers before. Yeah, this is a fact. Yeah but only on a case-by-case -case basis. If I know that this student, uh, for example, have been regular in attending classes, yeah? So I know that this student um, associate with me purely on a spiritual basis, yeah? Um, and if I can help the person fix the computer or handphone or whatever, and then the person can focus on the Dharma, then I will do it. But there were ever... <laughs> some random Facebook friend. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, on Facebook, except for the first, uh, first few where I added, after that, I don't add people anymore. Yeah. If you want, you add me. <laughs> so some, some students, have, they find it very strange. So, so how come you still don't add me? I'm like, no, no, I don't add people. You, add, you want, you add me. <laughs> so, so whoever add me, I will take a look at the profile, make sure it's not a fake account, then I, I will accept. So there was once this, this random Facebook friend um, sent a message to me and asked me, so say, uh, Venerable, uh, so I, I understand that you are quite good at computers. Uh. Uh, my com company computer, uh, there's something wrong now. Can you help me take a look? Then I'm like, Ask me that <laughs> Yeah, so that's why I, I told the person off. I told, told that person, no, no, uh, I don't do tech support. I don't do repair. Yeah. Uh, for that matter, when I was working in the tech industry, I don't do repair of personal computers. <laughs> I design, I, I was either in R&D, I was designing soft, writing software, or in consulting, I was designing business systems. I design systems. <laughs> I don't fix computer. <laughs> Although I happen to know how to 
do computers also because that's my own hobby. But I don't do that uh, on the side. Uh. Yeah. I will tell you this. Even back in the US, there was a devotee of my teacher. So he's around maybe a few years younger than me, uh, around my age. So the trouble is when they were around the same age, uh, and sometimes they, 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 they becomes uh, too familiar, you know. So one day this 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 um, new devotee, he texts me, he says, um, oh venerable. So I heard that our the Farin Monastery website was set up by you. Uh, uh, can, can you help me set up a website? Then I'm like, huh? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, so I asked, like, uh, is it some Buddhist society website? Because to me, if you are help, trying to help uh, another Buddhist society to set up a website, no problem, I can help you. But usually I would like to teach you how to set up, then just do it for you. That's why most people, when they ask me for help, they get very frustrated. <laughs> Because I like to teach people how to do it. I don't like to do it for people. Teaching people how to do it is harder than doing it for people. For, for me, uh, for me, doing it for people is very easy. Just ta -ta -ta. <laughs> but I, I want to teach people how to do it. So I teach you, then you can do it for the rest of your life. You don't have to rely on me. you know. And that's how I am even way back. So anyway, this guy asked me. So he, I asked him whether it's it for some Buddhist society. Then he... he he hesitated, then he said, uh, no, 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 uh, actually it's for my company. Then I'm like, uh, then, then cannot. <laughs> then he said, um, then he even offered to make payment. Then I said, even, even worse, even more cannot. <laughs> I told him, I can, I can, um, but the, the, the most I can do is, I can teach you how to do it. Uh, I teach you, you can do it yourself. Then he, he thought about it. Then he said, oh, how about if I do donation to the monastery? I said, even worse. They also cannot. <laughs> so in that, I never help him on that. Yeah. So livelihood uh, for, for monastic is, the Buddha make it very clear cut. You, you have not to engage in any form of uh, business or trade. Yeah. Because otherwise, our role become blurred. Yeah, become blurred. For lay people, uh, you, you'll find that in the Buddha's teaching, he don't, uh, he don't stipulate a lot of things to control lay people. Yeah. Because the, 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 the Dharma is not, not meant to control people. Yeah. So he, he give out some guidelines yeah, for people to follow so that um, depending on what you want, then you'll get what you want. Yeah. So the Buddha is also known as the wish fulfiller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he, he don't fulfill a wish by just dung, <laughs> a wish is fulfilled. He show you how to achieve what you want. So if you want a happy lay life, he, he advise you how to have a happy lay life. If you are sick and tired of lay life, you want to progress spiritually, uh, then he, he consider to what level. Uh, if you want to be reborn in the heavenly realm, not just as a human being, uh, he teach you how to achieve that. If uh, if you are sick of, uh, if you consider sensual desire uh, in the uh, heavenly realm, in the sensual desire realm, is not sufficient, then he teach you how to meditate to have concentration. If after you attain concentration, you, 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 you find that you are able to go further, he teach you further. Yeah. So for livelihood, uh, generally speaking, huh, anything that is, uh, uh, from what we look at the different cases uh, that he highlighted, that's highlighted in the Vinaya, uh, generally speaking, for lay people, any livelihood that is harmful, yeah, uh, that means it requires you to harm others, uh, it, sh it should be avoided. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think one of the Bhante shared with me this. He said, uh, so as a result, in some countries, like the Terrible countries, uh, then they have this uh, uh, situation. 
Yeah, and he he said this. Uh, this is what he said. Uh, he said, like, sometimes Buddhists become hypocritical, you know? Yeah, because we ourselves, we don't engage in such livelihood. So like, for example, fishing is a uh, wrong livelihood. So the so some Buddhists will look down on fishermen. Ah, yeah, all these fishermen engage in wrong livelihood. But then this, this self-righteous Buddhists are the same people who go to market and buy fish. <laughs> so, so even as we practice right livelihood, uh, we should consider ourselves. Are we cause are we part of the reason why they have to engage in this livelihood? <laughs> so don't be too fast to, to come in and you know go on a moral high horse and huh, you all unwholesome people. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, sis asks, how about hawkers selling non-vegetarian food but does not involve killing of live animals? Mm. So, uh, selling of non-vegetarian food is on a certain level similar to uh, cooking at home uh, if you don't cook vegetarian food. The difference is when you are a uh, hawker, you are one step closer to the act of killing. Yeah. Further, when you sell, uh, when you are selling, uh, let's say chicken rice, okay, for example, uh, <clears throat> how many chicken do you, do you chop up? Yeah. Do you hope to chop up more chicken or hope to chop less chicken? Chances are you hope to sell more, right? Yeah. Any have you heard of any chicken rice store who, who just uh sell two chicken a day? Not, not that the two chicken they sell at hundred dollars per chicken, uh, or even hundred dollars two chicken cannot make it. Uh. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> when uh when a person engages in such a trade, uh while it's not directly killing, yeah, it's also not a, not a suitable livelihood. Uh. Mm. Not, not too wholesome also, because you are actively engaging in, you know, <laughs> everyday chopping, chopping. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you ask me, uh, I would refrain from this kind of livelihood as well. Now, I've ever heard, uh, shared some of this before. Then some students ask, but Sifu, if I don't sell, who is going to sell? That's like saying, if I don't sell cigarette, who is going to sell cigarette? There are people who need to smoke one. The example I gave last time <clears throat> is drugs. Now I calibrate a bit, cigarette. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there may be some people who won't sell. <clears throat> right? As long as there are people who want to smoke, there will be people who will be happy to, you know, sell you. Yeah, because if there's a demand, then there's a price for it. Ma. Yeah. So don't have to worry about, if I don't sell uh, the, the, the what you call it, non vegetarian food, who is going to provide the non vegetarian food? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that's all I wanted to highlight. Yeah, because I, I remember, I think, was it these few days, there was a question about uh, if, if don't know the son or somebody when uh, become, uh, go into esports as a profession. Yeah. Uh, for esports, honestly, it's a bit ambiguous. Uh, it's a bit ambiguous. Uh, but I, I mentioned about this sutta where uh, the, the Buddha said that those who engage in entertainment, yeah, uh, there'll be those who, who are still not a switch in terms of their defilements. That means their defilements is still active. So when they watch certain entertainment, their greed, hatred, and delusion will arise. Yeah. Uh, so if a person were to uh, engage in such trade, such as acting, yeah, act as I've mentioned many times, uh, 
if you star in a movie yeah, or a TV series and it doesn't arouse greed, hatred or delusion in the viewer, you have failed as an actor. <laughs> Yeah, you have failed as, as an actor. Yeah. Um, so the Buddha said that someone who uh, engaged in such a trait, yeah, uh, the the uh, what I call it, the rebirth is not good. Huh? Or more information, you can find this sutta in the Samyutta Nikaya. Yeah. Oh, under under the heads headsman uh, Samyutta. There's one, there's one particular chapter uh, where all the different headsmen ask the Buddha question. It's not that all of them queue up together then one time ask. Uh, it's that different headmen ask the Buddha or clansmen. Uh, I think it's the headmen of different groups, tribes or, or clan. Uh, and they all ask questions at different times. And when the monks collate the sutta, they group them under this category. So uh, if there's no other questions, uh, uh, that's all we have for today. Okay, I have translation later. Uh, Phyllis, you, uh, you have a question then, Jess? So what about singer? Are they, are they considered? Oh, singer. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, Underperformer also, huh? yeah. And the and the trouble is, the even in singing, right? Uh, again, there there are some students who who try to ask me, uh, but not all songs or not all movies are trying to titillate your your defilements, yeah, yeah. But uh. How to survive as a singer if you don't do that also? Huh? <laughs> huh? You you ask Emmy Emmy Wee whether he's doing very whether she's doing uh, making a killing. <laughs> huh? You if you sing for she for she huh? every day for uh, for a me to sing sing <laughs> every day you you, you sing this ah uh, tam <laughs> Yeah, you, you ask yourself, uh, some whether it's a more Western or Chinese singer, yeah, come in and then either sing some nonsense or sing some I love you, you love me, that kind of song. Wow, people go crazy, yeah, yeah people just go crazy, yeah. Remember the Korean guy, Sarang, <laughs> then people go crazy, yeah. Imagine he come in and then he sings some patriotic Korean song. <laughs> you think anybody will watch? <laughs> yeah. So um, I going by the sutta, then we say try to avoid this kind of profession. Oh. Uh, but if you ask me, Sifu, are you able to say for sure which singer will go to the lower realms? I, I, I cannot. Yeah, I cannot. Yeah. Oh, maybe there are some singer who really every day sang Ai Guo Ge Chi. But Ai Guo Ge Chi can also create, <laughs> you know, so what kind of song? Every day. Ru Xia. <laughs> yeah. How, how many singers willing to just spend the rest of their life singing Lu Xiang Zan? Yeah. Day in, day out. How many of you would attend a concert? Yeah. Uh, once every quarter. Or twice a year, lah. Or twice a year, two hundred dollars concert. Just listen to Lu Xiang Zan. How many of you? <laughs> Bo Lang. <laughs> Even just hypothetically, nobody. Yeah. Of course, of course. To begin with, maybe you are not interested in concert. Yeah. Uh, but you ask around those Buddhist friends of yours who who actually go for concerts. Yeah. And, not, not shaming anybody. Uh. I have some students who every year, yeah, of course, these two years, no concern. Uh. Yeah, but in the past, ever heard of them, you know, they, <coughs> they would go and watch uh, Zhou Xie Lun, uh. not Zhou Hua Qi. Zhou Hua Qi is 
old, old already. Yeah. But some of my students, 50s, 60s, wow, go for Zhou Jie Lun. No? Uh, uh, so, Xiaofang asks, what about monks who sing but convert the lyrics to Buddhist teachings? Yeah, so this is where it becomes a bit grayer. Mm. But I like to think that the monk, the intention is to bring people to the Dharma. Uh, so uh, there are two types. Uh. One is where the tune is still quite dull, and then the lyrics are solely inspired from the, the, the what you call that, uh, the, the sutras. Uh, don't, don't be surprised. Huh? I'm not talking about the, the recent, uh, I think in, more, in recent times, there's one particular venerable who actually do a lot of uh, concert. But in our pe time period, there's one master, Hong Yi Da Shi. Uh, Hong Yi Da Shi is the first Buddhist monk who incorporate Western uh, instrument. Yeah, he used he 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 used the piano. Then, uh, he and he, it's not him alone. Uh. He and another venerable. I can't remember who is the other venerable, but together you know the Sam Bao Ge. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you notice this is very now now when we listen, we, we feel it's very Chinese, but actually the tune is not Chinese, you know. <laughs> it's very Western. <laughs> the the it's, it's fully played using uh originally was or was played using piano. No? Yeah, you can watch the you can look at the history. So he 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 did this and not just this. Uh, a few masters tried to so-called modernize Buddhism. Yeah, so the aim is not to become famous for being a singer, <laughs> you know, seeking fame and glory and try to get people to, to give him uh, material benefit. No. Yeah. And, and, and least of all, uh, uh, the aim is not to create, uh, cause people to have great hatred delusion. Yeah. So, uh, the, the lyrics is rather important, oh, but uh, on that point, right, uh, I noticed that there are some that use uh, the tune from modern music. So I attended, I was invited by some students to attend one. I attend halfway, then I decided to leave. Yeah. Uh, and the reason is, uh, I number one, I find it very uncomfortable to have, uh, because the whole atmosphere become quite, quite uh, really like concert one. 每个人都好像疯了这样，有点感觉。Then, like it's very, it's very emotional, you know. Um, and most importantly, uh, because the, the tune is worldly. Yeah, like 你问我爱, you know that kind of tune. So. For most people, when you hear such tune, immediately you are linked to the other side. Like. <laughs> then, but, so I wonder how many of them, when they listen to such uh, Buddhist Buddhist song, right, do they connect with the Dharma or with those earlier emotions that they have when they listen to such music? Number one. Number two, um, I still stayed for a while. I don't just dismiss it because since I accepted the invitation, the lyrics, unlike like Hongyi Da Shi, is, lit, is very closely lifted from the sutra or inspired from the sutra. The lyrics, when I look at it, uh, some of it have some question mark. <laughs> I have question mark. Uh, so I was like, uh, okay, cannot. <laughs> so I left. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. So th this is where it becomes a bit tricky. Lah. Nian asked, how about, very quickly, uh, how about cashier accounts they work at catering? Uh, work at catering, mean not all selling non-vegetarian food. Mm. Uh, so if you are working as a cashier, let's say in a supermarket, you cannot expect the supermarket to be selling all vegetarian items. Uh. Yeah. So, but, so that, that, but that is sort of one step divorced from the process dealing with the meat itself. 
Yeah. Um, when it comes when it comes to precepts, the Buddha is very clear on whether you are directly involved in the act of killing or not. Even the 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 vegetarian, the, the hawker who is selling non-vegetarian is not directly involved in killing, but is much closer to the act of killing than not. Yeah. So then in terms of karma, karma don't I, I have not seen any evidence of the Buddha linking karma indefinitely. Oh, there are some people who say that, well, but if you are not a vegetarian, not even talking about selling non-vegetarian, some people say that if you're not a vegetarian, you are indirectly causing the killing. So you are responsible for it also, right? Um, I don't see any evidence in the Buddha's teaching. Yeah, Maybe if I miss out any sutra, you all can correct me. Uh. But so far, whenever I see the Buddha talk about karma, right, it's a very direct, that means your action, your intent, plus your action directly result in the harm, or not an uh, indirect thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the closest to the indirect is if you ask someone to go and kill. Yeah. If you ask someone to kill, that, that is still fairly direct. Although you're not directly killing, you're asking someone to kill and the person kill for you knowingly, every, the whole process, you're directly involved. So that's why we say, don't eat live seafood because you're directly asking the person kill. Whereas if you go to a non-vegetarian store, <clears throat> the chicken is very dead really. <clears throat> yeah. One possibility where you're eating at a certain stall becomes a problem is if the chicken rice stall owner see you come every day yeah, or come regularly enough and then the, the chicken rice stall owner uh, goes to the farm directly to order and when he go and order he, 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 he over time he tell well I tell you nowadays uh, there's a few of them I know them by name Wow, they are regular. They support me so well. Please find me some extra fat chicken. <laughs> then when you, when you come and order, the, that person tell you, Wow, ah, Lee, come, come. Today's chicken very fat, just specially for you. Of course, a lot of businessmen do that. Uh, but actually all rubbish on them. <laughs> they're, they're usually, Hey, Laban, today's chicken is rubbish. They cannot even remember you. But in the event, if they actually know you personally and they make that choice, then it's becoming a not dotted line, uh, becoming a solid line all the way. And if the if the butcher know the know who he, he intended for and then pick the one kill with the intent, jalat, <laughs> become a solid line. Uh. Uh, so um, that's why there's the San Jing Road, right? Jian Wen Yi. Yeah, if you see a sentient being being killed, if you hear the cries, you know if you suspect that it's being killed for you, then you shouldn't eat it. Yeah. So if you're going to be a non-vegetarian, better eat randomly. Or <laughs> Maybe when you go there, oh yeah, nowadays wear masks, are, so no problem. <laughs> Nobody know who you are. <laughs> yeah, but even then, uh, some people ask me, so is it compulsory to be a vegetarian? I say. Being a vegetarian is a is a is your choice, yeah. Uh, you, I don't I don't tell students you must be a vegetarian. I just tell students you should avoid ordering live food, yeah, or live food don't order, yeah. Over time, if you start to learn more of the teachings and you see sentient beings for sentient beings, you don't see them as food. <laughs> you relate to them as fellow sentient beings, mother sentient beings, then do you sing her? How can you bring yourself to oh. uh, last last thing huh? So uh, what about instructor that teach exercise with music? Example aerobics exercise. Uh, your aim is to teach aerobics, not to yeah so this is a bit a bit off la, a bit different. Oh, your primary aim is to teach exercise. Yeah. <clears throat> but of course, if you when you do exercise, then you play the kind of music that is very arousing one. <laughs> right. 
there are also different music but you play those uh, those kind of like i don't know some music came on talking about you know very carnal activity <laughs> yeah so here we meet again, maybe guided and protected by the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. Sa, sa, sa. And as always, quite, quite. have a lively day ahead. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.